Oh, okay, I'm a high school geometry teacher, and one of my students' favorite things to do is to annoy me, right? That's what high school students do. And one way they can try to annoy me is with math memes and things designed to challenge the ideas that I teach in the class in ways that are hard to refute uh, <laughs> without thinking really carefully. So here we have pi equals four. And my initial attempts to refute this, um, my mind instantly jumps to calculus, but I need to be able to refute this in a way that can convince a high school geometry student who's annoying me with the meme, right? So let me attempt to explain this in a way that'll make sense. But first, let's actually explain the meme itself in case you clicked on this video and you know you haven't actually read the thing or you don't understand it. Let me shrink myself down out of the way just a little bit here. Hey, math, that's a dilation. Transformations, look at that. There we go. Okay, anyway, so we're making an argument that pi equals four, and then, then, then we're gonna refute this argument. So draw a circle with diameter equal to one. Well, what does that even have to do with the value of pi? Well, again, pi is related to the diameter of a circle. Pi times the diameter of a circle is the circumference formula, right? So circumference is defined as pi times the diameter, which means that if the diameter is one, then pi times one, right, is just pi, and that means that the circumference of this circle is pi. And this entire meme argument revolves around this idea, that the circumference of a circle with a diameter one is pi. And remember, the circumference is just the distance around the circle. So then, they're going to take a square drawn around the circle, right? Let's zoom in on, on that piece. So now we have a square drawn around the circle, and its perimeter is four, because the diameter is one, then the side lengths are the same as the distance across the circle, perimeter is gonna be four. Okay, no issues with that argument whatsoever. Okay, next, uh, next uh, bit we've got here is remove the corners. Okay, so if you remove the corners, the perimeter is still four. And if you need a little explanation on that, think about how the fact that the dashed lines that are being removed are the same length as the little inner cuts that they're making here. So by making those little, the cut go in instead of out, the perimeter of the square, well, it's no longer a square, but the perimeter of the shape has not changed because those two pieces are equal. Now, we remove more corners. So we just continue this same argument and the perimeter remains four. And you could do this indefinitely. So it's basically saying, repeat that to infinity and the shape that you're creating here has a perimeter of four, but that perimeter is the circumference of the circle. Because if we do this infinitely, there wouldn't be any difference between that and the circumference of the circle, or so this meme is relying on for its argument. And then we get the pi equals four problem Archimedes. Well, first let me point out, I object to this because of the exclamation point. That's a factorial. And I can tell you that this argument does not prove that pi is equal to 24. Anyway, problem Archimedes. Well, Archimedes, th that's a reference to, because we need to explain jokes for them to be funny, right? Uh, that's a reference to the fact that Archimedes, ancient Greek mathematician, approximated pi using polygons um, uh, inside and outside of a circle that then as the number of sides increased to infinity, or in other words, as they got bigger, the values of those, um, the perimeter of the polygons would approach the same thing as the circumference of the circle. And that's how he arrived at an approximation of pi. Okay, so this seems like a similar kind of argument. So if we say that this argument's wrong, then Archimedes was wrong too, except that there's some differences here. The issue here is that at, with Archimedes' approach, his values, the slopes of the regular polygons, the slopes got closer and closer to equaling the slopes of the points on the circle. Whereas in this argument, that doesn't happen. Now, again, that's really an idea related to calculus, although it is fairly intuitive. Let me see if I can break this down in a way that makes sense. Uh, without calculus ideas. And here's the basic argument. This really isn't approaching the circumference of the circle. It's approaching the area of the circle. And one thing that actually high school geometry students have a bit of an issue with is understanding the difference 
between the area of a shape and its perimeter. And that those two things not only aren't the same thing, but they're not as closely related as you might expect them to be. So as this gets closer and closer into the circle, its area is definitely approaching the area of the circle, but its perimeter is not. Its perimeter is remaining four. Its perimeter is not changing. But you're like, but it looks more and more like the circle. Okay, it does look more and more like a circle. But here's the thing. I could say that like, I have a straight line. So here's where I'm just gonna try to make an intuitive argument, not, not a calculus argument for this. I could take this straight line, and then I could take uh, a rope that was, you know, much, 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 much longer than this line. And we can obviously tell that this coiled up rope is completely different than the length of the straight line, right? Okay, so does making those coils tighter and tighter and tighter make this a better argument? It might look more like the line, but it's doing nothing to a change the actual length of the rope. And that's the underlying intuitive way to understand what's wrong with this argument. Because as the shape starts to look more like the circle, its area is approaching the area of the circle, but its perimeter is not. Its perimeter is remaining four, just like if you coiled up a rope. Like, okay, so I'm taking the rope idea again. What if you took a box and you filled the box with a coil of rope? You wouldn't say that the length of the box or the perimeter of the box is the length of the rope. The area that you're filling in the bottom of the box with might have the same, be covered by the rope, but that has nothing to do with the length of the box. And that is my um, attempt to make this make sense for a high school student. Um, in the description of this video, I will link some uh, mathematically minded articles on the topic uh, that explain more at the calculus level, which was not my goal in this video. I argue with high school geometry students. <laughs> if you, oh, excuse me. <coughs> If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel where I post math-related content. Again, that's designed to be approachable uh, to somebody with just a high school level of uh, math knowledge, but still interesting. And I hope you have an excellent day.